So the obvious thing that we want to do today is to showcase the next generation higher national project. We want to tell you um, exactly what it is we're about. We are going to look at some of our key achievements to date and our future plans. Now, I should stress that this session is very much focused on those that are new to next gen HN. So that feedback in the Menti session, you know, hovering there um, between one and two in terms of familiarity is exactly as we would have expected and hugely reassuring because it means we've attracted the correct audience to our session today. Um, as well as giving um, that snapshot of our achievements to date and our future plans, um, we are hopefully whetting your appetite for part two as well. So we realise that everything that we are covering today um, is not everything that, um, in the next gen story, but it's a good start and will link very nicely um, to that second webinar coming up in June as well. So if we can move on then to the next slide, please. Um, I wanted to start with our vision statement and you can see that on screen. Um, you know that we are aiming to deliver dynamic and flexible, flexible qualifications. And those qualifications are going to develop skills, self-awareness, creativity and resilience. Meeting industry and societal needs, they empower and enable learners to thrive in a fast changing and complex world. And my goodness, what an ambitious vision statement that is. And we recognise that not only are we aiming to deliver on this vision statement, um, for Next Gen HN, that we are doing that in a time of real change. We saw change coming up, you know, in the Menti session, it came up in our word cloud. Um, and, you know, we recognise that this ambition um, is being realised during a time that is very fast moving and pressurised for us all. And I'm mentioning that simply because um, that will I hopefully be reflected um, in the approach that we have taken um, to the developments themselves to, with our way of working and at the heart of everything that we do in Next Gen HN is collaboration. Um, we know that um, we are revolutionising our HN qualifications. We know that we have that really chunky um, vision statement, you know, weighty vision statement. And we know that we cannot deliver on that alone. You know, we have a great team here in SQA. You know, we um, are striving to do the, all that we can to deliver, but we can't do that alone. Um, we have been, you know, really blessed with the engagement that we have received, not just from our college centres, but from um, those key contacts in HEIs, those relationships that we've made, and at the heart of it all is collaboration. Um, if we can move on to the next slide, please. So we started with our design principles, and these are the key points, the key aims that we aim to deliver when we are designing our qualifications. So we know that the HNC and the HND are designed to be individual qualifications and each will be comprised of 120 SCQF credit points at level seven and level eight retrospectively. The qualifications themselves will be comprised of larger and fewer units and that there will be a mandatory project based unit worth at least 24 SEQF credit points. The aim of those larger and fewer units, one of the aims um, is not just to reduce the assessment load, but also to make sure that there is time and space for more detailed learning. We're not in a race to continually assess and that the assessment when it comes um, is appropriate and very much reinforcing that learning experience. So that space for a deeper dive. Um, we are embedding opportunities for learning for sustainability. We have incorporated meta skills. I'm, I'm really glad to see that that was reflected um, in, the word uh, in the word cloud there. Um, 
we are introducing new grading models. So we're grading across the qualification as a whole, not just end loaded on the graded unit. Um, we have developed a new and supportive approach to external quality assurance and the feedback um, around that approach has been um, very positive to date and last but by no means least um, we are aiming to be digital by design so we are aiming to use technology and embed that technology to enhance and support that assessment and those learning and teaching approaches wherever appropriate. Um, like our vision statement, that um, is quite a list. And again, you know, really do stress that these are our design principles, but without our wider collaboration and the support from our key stakeholders, we would not be making the progress that we have to date. And we are going to highlight some of that key progress throughout the rest of this presentation. So we can move on to the next slide, please. And this is the point that I get to hand over to Grant Anderson. Thanks, Val. Good afternoon, everyone. So as Val mentioned, my name is Grant Anderson, so I'm one of the new product development managers working within the, the next gen HN project. Um, so the slide in front of you just now is our next gen HN development cycle. Um, Val obviously mentioned our design principles and I can take you through how those design principles are incorporated within our development cycle. So you'll see at the top of the slide we've got some pre-development activities. So these are some of the things that have happened before we've even moved in, moved into the sort of development cycle of our, our subject areas. So first off being consultation. So there was continuous consultation between um, February 2018 through to March 2019. And that consultation was really to look at how we reshape and transform our HN qualifications for the future. Um, obviously, we had to go through a, a process of subject selection as well, um, which was an important process for us to go through um, to determine which areas we would then develop qualifications within our project. There was a variety of reasons and um, sort of selection process that we went through. Um, one of the main ones being that we had to test those design principles that Val had mentioned earlier. So it was really to make sure that we had a wide variety of subject areas that could fully test the design principles that we are putting through our next gen qualification process. Um, and then to move a bit more into the development cycle um, and the development of the qualifications, um, you'll see that we had to form our QDTs, so that's our qualification design teams, and the formation of those was crucial for us in terms of actually developing, um, really because this is where our collaborative approach comes in. So in terms of development, our development does follow a service design model, and that really sort of focuses on continuous improvement and collaboration. So the collaboration through that, that development has come really through that QDT formation. So our QDTs and all of our developments have a wide range of stakeholders involved. So we have learners on our QDTs, we have college representatives, we have employers, training providers, um, HEIs are involved in some of our QDTs as well, and some statutory and regulatory bodies are represented on those as well. So a wide variety. Um, of stakeholders have had a say and, and a sort of um, a, a working involvement in developing some of our next gen qualifications. So moving down to the diagram in the middle where you can see the circle on the left hand side, you can see that number one there um, starts with our design principles. So the design principles that, that Val sort of spoke through um, is uh, they are really what are being used by the qualification design teams to then form and develop the qualification. And that's happening through number two there. And then if we move on to number three, what we have produced for our qualifications to move to prototype and pilot stage is a minimum viable product. So that minimum, vi minimum viable product for us doesn't actually mean it's a qualification that's by less in terms of any standard. We still produce everything that is required to make sure that we can go through a full pilot delivery of the qualification. So that MVP includes our educators guide for delivery, our grading documentation, all of our grading rubrics that go along with that and any other grading documentation which is required to make grading decisions. 
Um, and on top of that, all the full unit specifications. So our pilot centres are given the full suite of documents and all of the relevant information that they need to then carry out a proper pilot of these qualifications. And the pilot delivery then starts at stage four there. And if you see across to the right, that's where things actually start to become real in terms of delivering those qualifications. So during pilot delivery, there are various stages where we are collecting feedback and evaluating how those qualifications are actually piloting. Um, so we gain feedback from both learners and from centre staff as well. We do that at various stages throughout that delivery, and that's really for us to gauge and measure the performance of the qualifications and to capture any potential changes. Um, so we are gathering feedback and change requests from all of our pilot centres and taking into consideration how learners are feeling about the actual progress they're making on those qualifications as well. And that comes, comes around to our evaluation, analysis and validation. So that we'll come on to that a little bit later on today's presentation where we speak a little bit about those evaluation activities and then that moves into programme implementation, obviously once that evaluation is complete. You'll see at the bottom of that slide there, we've also mentioned our project strand support. So our project is a very large body of work. We have over 17 strands of activity that are happening within our project. Each of those strands are concentrating on a very specific aspect of next gen and all of that does actually knit together nicely to ensure that we can deliver the vision statement that Val actually spoke about in the very first slide. So you'll see some of those projects on there. We've listed just a few of them which will be relevant to you. So things like meta skills or quality assurance, digital learning and assessment um, or digital publishing, learning for sustainability. So some of those have basically strands in their own right and are working towards the delivery of our next gen qualifications. So if we could move to the next slide, please, Elish. So this this slide then depicts really when our developments have started and the subject areas that started during this period of time. So this sort of reflects the wide variety of subjects um, that we have now started to take through the development process for our next gen qualifications. Um, so you can see that we've had development starting over a, a varied period of time um, and really that's to spread out the amount of work that we're actually producing and obviously to spread the load in terms of our pilot centres as well. So these qualifications have been through are going through development just now and starting to move into pilot um, at a number of our centres. And this is where I can hand over to Jane who will talk a little bit more about our pilot centres. Thank you very much, Grant. And if we could have the next slide, Eilish, please. Thank you. One of the main channels for our collaborative approach to the Next Generation project is because we are piloting these qualifications. It's the first time that SQA has, has done this, uh, certainly at scale. And so we have 14 centres in Scotland. Most are further education colleges, but we do have one training provider, which is absolutely super, who are doing the testing of the prototype minimum viable product that Grant has just described to you. So our pilot centres are absolutely at the heart of our work and this development, and we work very, very closely with each of our pilot centres. So the, the range of support, the range of touch points between us and our pilot centres is very, very extensive. We have highlighted a few of those touch points between ourselves and our piloting centres on this slide, but there is much, much more. At the moment, we are part of the way through a programme of webinars, which we have called themed conversations and that title really reflects that collaborative working relationship and professional dialogue that we have with our pilot centres on an ongoing basis. Prior to this year and our themed conversations, we did host a series of six webinars. They started in January 2022. We did six in total 
and they were a little bit more a presentation of information about HN Next Gen. You can find all of them on our website and we touched on all of the big themes around grading and meta skills, learning for sustainability, articulation and progression, quality assurance and we finished that series with um, a, a a wonderful session uh, hosted by um, a, a couple of pilot centres who had piloted the Higher National Certificate in television uh, the previous year. They're all on our website and accessible to you. But working with our pilot centres this year, it's been around that conversation and collaboration. And interestingly, those conversations have also focused on articulation and progression and grading. These are <clears throat> such complex but rewarding topics for, for those conversations. We delivered, for example, grading orientation workshops to our pilot centres at the start of the year because the change in approach from a single graded unit to whole qualification grading is a big shift and we wanted to spend some good amount of time with our pilot centre teams just going through what this shift in, in grading will mean. Um, the intriguingly named Quality Manager Costa sessions reflects the fact that we have quality managers and teams within all of our pilot centres and we have, well, we host um, meetings with those quality managers in a very relaxed and collaborative atmosphere because that is as much about peer support and networking and solving problems together as anything else. So I can't quite remember, but that name emerged from the very first meeting. We, we just ended up calling them our Costa sessions and that, that very friendly atmosphere um, prevails. We also, of course, deliver training and support on more technical aspects. So a good example of that is a recent series of sessions that we held with our pilot centres going through um, how to certificate, how to enter candidates for next gen, how to make sure that they were putting in the right data in the right way to ensure that candidates get the right certificates at the end of the process. So a very wide range of touch points. And um, we have keep in touch meetings on a monthly basis. And indeed, our new approach to quality assurance, um, those, those meetings are, are called touch points. Um, so I think the vocabulary does give you a flavour of that working relationship with our pilot centres who are absolutely fundamentally important to the success of this project. So we just skip on to the next slide, Elish, please. We've gathered just a very few quotes for you to illustrate how our pilot centre partners and the delivery teams are finding next gen. And this is not to say that there are not challenges. Of course there are. The point of piloting anything is to find where, where the rub is and, and that's happening too. But overall, our pilot centres are enormously positive about their experience of working with these new qualifications. And the quotes there illustrate um, some of those successes. So longer lessons are allowing deeper dives into, into learning and that in turn is giving learners more opportunity to reflect upon their practice and get that deep learning at the heart of what they're doing. The, the units are, are current and creativity is on the increase, which is a, a, a lovely quote from South Lanarkshire College there. And the very last one on the screen, I know this one well because I work with New College Lanarkshire in the, the TV pilot and, 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 and this is a quote from somebody on that team. Feeling more like a practitioner working with new talent rather than a lecturer working with students. So a real transformation uh, away from perhaps a slightly more disengaged classroom atmosphere to it feeling like a working environment, which um, hopefully we will see the results of a student successfully progress from their next gen course into the world of work, or as Kevin was saying, the work of these future filmmakers. So just a wee flavour there of some of the feedback we're getting <clears throat> from our pilot centres. Thank you, and I'm going to hand over now to my colleague Grant Goulart.
Thanks, Jane. Could we have the next slide, please, Elisha? Thanks. So um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Grant Woolard. I'm another one of the new product development managers within the Next Gen core team. Uh, and I'm going to take you through some of the evaluation activities that we've done to date and some of the key themes that have emerged from those activities. So as you'll see, we've split this into prototype evaluation and learner engagement. Um, all of our Next Gen prototype qualifications go through quite a substantial number of ongoing evaluation activities um, prior to programme implementation. So I'm going to tell you about some of those activities that have happened so far. Um, all of our Next Gen qualifications have had a pre-pilot evaluation, which was mentioned earlier on in the development cycle. And that's where we invited a wide range of stakeholders to launch events. So those stakeholders included um, our pilot centres, members from qualification design teams, universities, employers, professional bodies, um, critical friends, amongst others. And we also held a series of practitioner focus groups. So I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about what we did um, and what we asked the practitioner focus groups. We've had round one so far. In round one, there were 12 meetings. Um, all hosted on Teams, and those took place from November last year to January uh, of this year, 2023. And we're planning another round of practitioner focus groups, so they'll take place from April to May 2023. And they will, again, uh, well, they'll be virtual and face-to-face, -face, those meetings. And then we will have around three in mid-June time, uh, 2023, obviously, and the output of that will be a survey. So I'm thinking that that, you know, survey will come out kind of mid June, July time. Um, what did we ask the practitioners? Um, we we actually co-developed uh, what we call discussion guides with strand leads. Those strand leads um, are um, internal strands. We have a lot of strands of work that, again, you saw in the development cycle. Um, to ask them about topics such as what what feels different. Um, how have they approached assessment differently? What have they done with meta skills? We asked them about articulation and progression, any queries they had, any opportunities that they saw. We also asked them about their initial thoughts on the new approaches to grading there too, and also about the, the level, the type and the frequency of all the the, the amount of communications, the vast amount of communi uh, communications that come out from, from SQA on Next Gen. We've also held a series of learner engagement focus groups, as you can see um, from the slides, um, and it was always our plan to have, you know, the engagement with learners throughout the development um, and delivery phases of the projects. It's extremely important to ensure that we've got those learner views considered. Um, learners are very much at the heart of next gen and are centered to our service uh, led design approach and also um, as one of the, the kind of main stakeholders that we collaborate with. So we'll also reflect on those learner engagement activities that we've done and we'll use that experience to develop um, <clears throat> a learner engagement plan for future um, developments. And I'll tell you a wee bit more about what we asked the learner focus group. So we've had um, round one of our engagement so far, where we had uh, 35 learner focus groups from the, those covered all of our 13 pilot centres or the 13 pilot centres at that point. Uh, there were 30 face to face focus groups and five of those were virtual. Uh, again, we developed discussion guides with prompt questions in there. And the, the focus groups took place from November last year to early December last year too. In total, I think we invited over 540 learners to pers uh, participate. And we had a really good uh, turnout rate, roughly 75% uh, of learners attended. So that was over 400 learners attended those focus, group, uh, focus groups. Um, they also included, and we made sure that we had um, Sparks class reps um, in there too. Sparks is the, the, the Student Partnership in Quality Scotland. 
Um, there has been a report produced um, that was January 2023. Now that's still to be published. Um, um, if you sign up for the newsletter, uh, which you'll see at the end of uh, the presentation, you'll probably get notification of when that's available. So sign up for that at the end if you want. Round two of engagement. Um, the arrangements for that are already underway. Those learner engagements will take place from April to May 2023. <clears throat> and where possible, we'll use the same cohort of learners. Um, obviously, for consistency, we know that some of them might not be available, um, but it's just to get kind of um, the same consistent um, voices heard within the, the output of those reports. There'll be a final report as well. On that, um, I'm thinking that if uh, it's kind of end of May, then the report might be out around maybe June time. So in terms of what we asked the learners, the focus was on the design principles that Val took you through uh, and the experience um, of them in practice. We asked um, what did they think about meta skills? How were they finding them? Did they feel there was less assessment taking place um, due to the, the larger units? Did they feel they had more time for learning? Some of them, a lot of them had previous co uh, college experience as well. And what was their experience of learning for sustainability? Uh, were they aware of changes to grading? Uh, if I could have the next slide, please, Ailish. Thank you. Um, so just to take you through some of the emerging themes that came out of that. Um, it's clear learners are enjoying next gen courses. Uh, that was really clear throughout you know, the, all of the feedback. And one of the things that came out in particular was learners are really enjoying the practical element of courses. That was mentioned in every single focus group. Uh, overall, there is a reduction in assessment load. And next gen learners feel that the units they're doing are preparing them well for industry. So those two bullets there, um, it's feedback based on early perceptions from evaluation, but hopefully that will be realised and, you know, end of evaluation activity too. Uh, there's flexibility in assessment. That means more contextualised uh, assessment. Again, positive in terms of the variation in assessment and, and the overall learner experience there. Um, there are some areas that we've identified that do need further changes, such as the incorporation of learning for sustainability. That needs further development, so um, it was good to get feedback on where things aren't maybe working as well. Uh, the adoption of meta skills has been positive, but there is uh, a need for further collaboration and sharing of good practice. I, I think it's fair to say that the, the learner experience of meta skills varied depending on the approach taken, um, you know, whether that was whether the the learner experience uh, they were getting that integrated approach across units, or whether meta skills were just being delivered as part of the project unit. Um, what did come through was that learners were very comfortable talking about their meta skills experience. So we've got new approaches to grading uh, seen as a positive step and fairer to candidates. 85% um, of the, the, the learner focus group said that they were aware of the changes to grading. So that was quite positive. It does seem a high number, but maybe it should be higher than 85%. Maybe everybody should be aware of the changes to grading. Um, the holistic approach was very much welcomed by the learners, perceived as being much fairer and more inclusive. And some of the common concerns just raised by learners were they wanted more clarity around the grading model. And they also were a wee bit concerned about how universities would understand next gen grading, because we've changed the grades from um, achieved, achieved with merit, and achieved with distinction um, as compared to you know the current grades for current HNs, which are you know the graded ABC units. Um, but that is something that we are working very closely and um, we, we are engaging with HEIs. We're definitely trying to roll that message out. Um, and finally, um, is there enough awareness of um, understanding across industry and employers? And I think we would hold our hands up and say, no, we probably need to do some work in that. So um, learners do seem very engaged from the start. Um, some centres are reporting a reduction in dropout. Again, it'll be interesting to see those kind of attrition rates at the end. 
and centres would like uh, more exemplification uh, to reassure that they're assessing appropriately, something again that's on our radar. Many pilot centres have been in discussions with universities to establish articulation agreements, and that's something again that we've been working quite closely with HEIs on to collaborate with universities to make sure that those arrangements are in place and that that articulation process is quite seamless. So I think it's safe to say that there's been quite a lot of engagement and evaluation activities at all levels with a lot of stakeholders. But we've still got quite a lot of engagements coming up, um, including our end of year pilot evaluation too. So um, it's a case of watch this space and we'll bring you an update in part two in our June webinar. So there's a good reason to go and sign up for the next webinar when it's available too. Um, I'll pass you over back to Val now, who's going to take you through uh, some of our key achievements and what's coming next. Thanks. Thank you, Gran. And I'm just reflecting we're all doing a great job of upselling our webinar series, aren't we? And we're dropping in that. Come to the next one at every opportunity. So I have the lovely slide. I get to speak about our key achievements, but I realise in doing so that um, we are providing some highlights and in providing highlights. We're missing some other activities off as well. So um, I really must you know, stress that this is an indicative list. It's definitely um, not everything. Um, the most important um, point on there is obviously th our first set of next gen HN graduates um, graduating. Um, we were absolutely delighted when our colleagues in Edinburgh College and New, La New College Lanarkshire um, successfully delivered the first um, pilot qualification that's HNC television um, and those graduation ceremonies took place um, and um, I'm sure the students um, and the lecturers in both colleges were celebrating and wishing them every success but we certainly were as well you know we recognize that yes this is a huge project but at the heart of it are our learners and if our learners are not having that positive experience and they're not graduating um, you know then we would would um, be really worried. So we were heartened um, to see that. And obviously we are looking forward to even more graduations this year with our increased range of qualifications being piloted. Um, one of the other really encouraging developments um, relates to professional body recognition. And um, that recognition um, is threaded through, um, I would say, every qualification that we are developing. Um, we know that professional body recognition takes many and varied um, shapes. We know that we have the Triple SC um, engagement in the development of and support for our um, childhood practice and our social services qualifications um, and if we didn't have that endorsement from the triple sc you know then the qualifications would not be able to be um, piloted this year um, and they are um, similarly um, we have our recognition for our accounting qualifications, we have a range of exemptions from the accounting bodies, such as the, Associ the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, ACA. Um, that's just one example. There are many others. Um, similarly, our physical activity and health um, qualifications, um, you know, have been developed closely in conjunction with colleagues in Sports Scotland. Um, I'm not going to go through a definitive list or we'll be here all afternoon, but I'm delighted to see that recognition from those that really matter for those subject specific qualifications that we are hitting the mark there and delivering what they need as well. Um, we are highlighting our engagement with higher education and again the examples there are indicative not a definitive list and um, we have had consultations hei showcase webinars so that has been referred to i think previously in this session as well but we basically held a showcase for each of the hnc pilot qualifications and um, so that our colleagues in universities in scotland and wider afield if they wanted to attend and um, were able to meet with the qualification teams those at the heart of the development and get a better understanding of each of the qualifications themselves. 
We have um, a joint, um, we have been working um, with the joint articulation group to strengthen the relationship there. Um, we were presenting at their last meeting in February and have been invited back um, in April as well. So really glad to have those personal contacts in that group too. Um, in Internally in SQA, we have our Articulation, Progression and Grading Advisory Group. Um, that group is made up of key stakeholders, um, not just from HEIs, because obviously people can be um, progressing to employment as well. So HEI representatives, employers, key stakeholders like SDS representation, etc. as well. Um, University Scotland engagement there too. So again, I'm not going to list the full range of members there but really delighted that we have that SQA led group really focusing on um, exactly you know what is best for our learners um, in that articulation progression and grading space. Um, our marketing comms and engagement definitely deserve a mention as well and I think if we go with the SWAN analogy, um, the marketing comms and engagement activity um, is definitely um, that below the water level with the SWAN's feet um, pedalling away to make everything else um, that happens and is, um, and is visible seem seamless. So again we've got indicative examples there, we have the next gen brand um, we have our web page and I would encourage everybody um, to bookmark that web page. Um, we update that regularly and it is becoming a really rich source of information. Um, there are webinars like this and SIPs, that's our internal meeting, our staff information um, sessions in SQA um, so that our colleagues know what we're up to as well. We have our next gen newsletter. Um, we have themed conversations, that's an in-depth look at particular topics with our pilot centres and the qualification showcases that I mentioned there as well. Um, I'm not going to carry on um, reading um, or going through all of those in detail. I will move on to the next slide. Thank you. And then looking forward, um, I mentioned, you know, that second graduate cohort so that we know that we all have around 600 learners um, able to graduate this year with one of our next gen qualifications. Our new qualifications have begun piloting, so acting and performance um, are in development this year and we'll be delivering the HNC for the first time next year. Um, we hope to have our computing HNDs piloting as well um, and really looking forward to, you know, working more closely with the pilot centres for those awards. Um, we have mentioned the evaluation activity, Grant certainly did that justice, so I'll not repeat um, that in detail, but again, just stressing that the evaluation activity does not stop just because our first year of pilot activity is over, that will continue. And last but not least, our digital learning. Um, that is a resource that we continue to build. Um, I am going to give a specific shout out for our learners' meta skills resources. We know that um, centres, colleagues across the education sector have been really keen to receive um, resources around meta skills, whether that is for our next gen qualifications, for apprenticeships, or you know anything else. So our meta skills resources are available through the learning sector on the Next Gen website and are definitely worth a look. The resources for learners will be added to over the next couple of months as well. So it is really developing to be a rich resource. And then last but not least, we have our Change Impact Assessment module as well. 